Warning. The following program may contain foul fucking language, gory ass shit, or the occasional slow point because I can be a lazy fuck with editing. Viewer discretion is potentially advised, but also probably rejected. Greetings from the land of OP! I am Rob the OP Gamer, and we are bringing you episode number three of Agrarian Sky's first run ever with Xavier wearing some really funky shoes. What are you wearing, bro? They're fashionable. Obviously, they're fashionable. What are they? They are plastic boots from Mine Factory Reloaded. Did you know that you can see down them? Like. If I get like right up in your grill like this, I can see like blank spots between your oh, feet hey. and them. Gotta save on that pressure precious rendering data. I guess. Can't have too much. <laughs> so we've been doing some work. Here's how you make them. Huh? Oh. Yeah, I know how to make them. Okay, you'll need them. I will. Oh yeah. Because We're doing mod trap. Right, mod trap. We've been doing some work around here, guys. Xavier's been sprucing the place up a little bit. It looks like he's on a mission to replace all the cobblestone, which is cool. I made a frame for a building. This is going to be used in this today's episode. You'll know what it is soon. It's a mystery. Oh, well, it's a mystery to everybody but me and you because you were watching me do it. I have uh, prior knowledge of what this is going to be. Mostly because, you know, we're doing this together. So, uh, i got a few things to show off on camera. Let's do the mob trap first. Xavier's been working diligently on getting us some mob drop setup going on. What'd you do, bro? You have a... There, oh, you saw it. Okay. Yep. We run around with that I built this on. contraption. This contraption? Oh, man. I need you to stand in front of it and jump around a little bit. Awesome, thank you. Okay. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna go up this ladder. Yeah, this is roof access, so you can more easily get to the mob spawning bits. The mob spawning bits, the bits for mobs that spawn, so we can rape their bits. Yep. Exactly. Crack stone. Yep. To get inside, just smash the crack stone bricks. Ah, uh, so. So basically it's just places for things to spawn here and they fall off under the conveyor belts? Yep, it's really a low tier mob spawner, but this one will let us get endermen. And they won't go away because of most mob traps using water. These use conveyor belts so the endermen won't teleport out of here and just move into our base. Being that they kind of kind of don't like water and they poof away? Exactly. So I remember an old Feed the Beast thing that we did ages ago on, I think it was Feed the Beast Insanity, and tried a mob trap like this with water in it that was tall enough for Endermen. They were everywhere. Yeah, they were. We couldn't get rid of them. So, we go down to get out of here? Yeah. Oh, hey, that's what the rubber boots do. Exactly. That's handy. I like it. So there's a double mirrored, mirrored on the other side, it looks like. So we're all good, and then we just fall down here. Yep. Right? Yep. And then what's going to go down here? Uh, that blank spot, so you can easily get... Uh, well, let me look. Right where I'm standing is where the mobs will fall, and you can chop them out with your sword, or you can use these. Punji sticks! So that's pretty much the trap. The so punchy sticks are five sugar canes, gives you five of them in a row. And they damage mobs that stand on them. You know, we have access to iron bar, why are you using punchy sticks? Just curious. Because I made the punchy sticks before we had the iron bar? Uh, maybe you say so. Hey, I did this last night. Okay. Activate. 
you're gonna go plug up whatever light holes is going on so they can start spawning? Yep. And then how do you get the drops? I don't see any automated way of collection. This is semi-manual at this point. Ah, fantastic. Well, you semi-manual your mob drops. I'm gonna go show off what I did for the uh, automated generation of building materials. So I was kind of happy with myself there. Sounds good. So I got a igneous extruder set up with a barrel for the cobblestone. People probably saw that at one point or another. And then I set up another one, another igneous, it's right behind, underneath the uh, sieve there. And right behind it is an aqueous. And inside the aqueous, or not inside the aqueous, inside the, uh, I'll just punch the sieve out of the way for a second here. Uh, it's making smooth stone, obviously, but it uses water, that's why the aqueous is there. Oh. Pretty simplistic. But I have the same thing going over here, this is automated, um, Obsidian going on. You can see that we are slowly, slowly getting lava. Very slowly getting lava. This has been running... How long has it been running, do you think, guy? I showed this to you last night before I went to bed. Uh, yeah, about a full day. About a full day. We got like a stack and a half of obsidian, which isn't too bad. It got us into alamite, alamite upgrades pretty quickly. And what I did is back here behind this, it's kind of a little bit, little bit of a setup. Oh, I see you've been messing with my stuff down here, bro. Uh, which stuff? Well, you didn't mess with the stuff, you just extended the platform down here. <laughs> yeah. So I had this all buried, hovering over the void. So basically, I've got an igneous making cobblestone on top of a crucible, which is melting lava. And the lava is going through a fluid duct. This is upgraded with a servo, so it can automatically pull liquid out. And it's dumping the lava straight into the igneous there. And then, that's covered up this way. Oh, shit. There we go. I like to cover things up, because... Yeah, I don't like monsters spawning in random places. So, that is dumping... It's going down and through the liquid duct and giving, feeding lava in. And then I've got another aqueous feeding infinite water to this thing. Because it takes a little bit of water and a little bit of obsidian. So it's a little bit of a setup, and this is all underneath the igneous... And this is an infinite lava setup, basically, to provide us with all the loving happiness that is associated with having obsidian. Because having to come around and get random obsidian just sucks. Right? Who has time to dig it out manually? Well, who has time to, to sit around and, like, melt? Like, when you need obsidian, you don't want to have to wait, like, go over here and, like, oh, cobblestone, really quick, and just throw some cobblestone in the, uh, in the crucible and just wait forever. Like, we got a little bit of a lava buffer in this tank over here for what we need for it, but, uh, who wants to wait for that lava to melt? You're like, I need, like, you're like, I need, like, eight obsidian. You're like, oh, shit, I gotta go melt it. So, now we don't have to melt it. And I've got kind of a similar thing back here, guys. This is basically the same sort of a system. I hate when things fall just out of your reach. That takes me off. Um, this is the exact same thing with an, uh, an igneous over top of a crucible. Does this thing still have its torch? Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Um, and this is feeding infinite lava to our smeltery, so we don't have to worry about powering the smelter either. So, it's just a nice little way of keeping fuel going. This is the part where you agree with me. I agree with you. Fantastic. Distracted. Fantastic. Did you get that thing going? Uh, it should be going. It relies on vanilla mechanics, so you need to not be close to it. Oh yeah, it's working. There is bits of zombie everywhere. Bits of zombie? Yeah, there are. Look at those bits of zombie. So as soon as we get a... Um, Ender Pearl, we're gonna make a vacuum hopper, at least I'm assuming that I get the first Ender Pearl for that. And we're gonna get some automated loot generation going. What do you think, Xavier? Auto loot? Yes. Sweet. So, uh, let's do some more Mortal Cries, and I'll be back. I AFK for a few minutes, and I come back, and I'm holding an Ender Pearl! Yes? Ender Pearl? 
will instantly turn this into a vacuum hopper. Like so. Make a chest. Do we? And then you take your chest and you make your hopper. That's what I'm doing with the second one, too. And... So we can automate these mob drops. Bow! Vacuum hopper. Good plan. These vacuum hoppers suck. Literally! Ha ha ha. But that's why we like them. That is why we like them. Anybody that hasn't seen a vacuum hopper before, it just places in the ground, you toss something, and it sucks it up! It goes up to about a four block radius, and you can have it instantly dump into a chest. And I will show more about that shortly. Alright, guys. So, this episode is drawing on really fucking long, at least for me. We're only about halfway mark in the actual recording process itself. But the thing is, is that uh, we were working on a project most of the day yesterday, and Xavier, being the lame wad that he is, lame wad, jerkass ran off to work on another project while we were supposed to be finishing up this project, and we never got it done. So I was at work all day today, and I got home. We're trying to finish up this recording for this episode. Basically, this is what happened right here. We got a bunch of loot going on. So, these are Java barrels, obviously. And these guys have got... I wonder if I hold this in my hand. Will I see it? No, it won't. Figures. Uh, basically, the deal right here is that we used some barrels. You need to get the Structural Mark II going on. Because these iron barrels right here have got void upgrades in them, which takes two slots. You can see the slots use two. So we need the iron upgrade slot, which gives you slots provided three. So basically, each one of these barrels, each one of these iron barrels, I should say, has been upgraded with a void upgrade, which means that when they fill up, they will, instead of like kicking back loot, say, hey, I'm full, and sending it back to the source, will instead keep accepting that item and just destroy any excess. So this barrel right here, you can see, has got 36 stacks of flint in it. It will continue accepting flint after it fills up completely and just destroy the extra flint. So yes, it, uh, it's going to be kind of a waste of loots. Trust, uh, it's, it's cool, don't worry guys. And we're going to get free loots anyway, because this is the part Xavier was supposed to be working on. This is auto loot forever. We got an igneous extruder creating cobblestone, feeding it into this autonomous activator, which is then right-clicking it in front of this autonomous activator, which is then being filled with hammers by this barrel right here. This is a hopper upgraded barrel, so it's dropping its hammers in here automatically. The only manual process of this, we have to keep making hammers and sticking them in this barrel. This vacuum hopper right here catches the gravel as it's, as it's smashed from that from that cobblestone, puts it in this autonomous activator. So this one's filling up with uh, gravel slowly, which is being sieved by these two autonomous activators. Once the sieving is complete, you can see the hopper will catch everything here. This particular vacuum hopper will catch the shit that comes off the gravel. It will, I promise. I swear it will. There we go, there's a diamond. Nice! Diamond! I love diamonds! And it feeds it into the storage loot system. So yes, we're wasting. We're gonna be wasting flint. Holy fuck, guys, flint! Who's gonna use 64 stacks of flint anyway? Jesus fuck. Yes, it's gonna be trash, but we're generating it for free. Chill out, guys. It's all fucking K, I swear to God. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, like, we're never gonna use that much flint. Everybody's probably... Most people that, I've, that I know of that play Minecraft have gotten to a point where they're like, I need so much, like, iron, but I have so much fucking flint. Or they're like, I have so much fucking coal, or whatever the fuck they've got so much fucking of. So this is just a nice way to get rid of some of the excess without having to worry about it. And these can also be upgraded so that they have greater capacity anyway. So if we decide later on we need, we do need 64 stacks of flint ready at all times, we can always upgrade that later. So there's the sorting system. There's the free loots that we were working on the last couple days. So that's a thing. This is eventually going to get expanded to include... Um, sieving sand and sieving dust so we get the extra loots like redstone and shit and uh, this I don't like how this loot wall ended up I think it's kind of dumb looking I mean I like having it accessible to our general crafting area out here but I kind of don't like how it turned out in general once Xavier actually figures out how he wants to build like the uh, the island and shit I'm probably gonna move a lot of this 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 room might get retrofitted or something because I don't like how it turned out but hey it's it's auto loots for now big fucking deal Xavier spent most of his day yesterday while he was supposed to be working on the auto loots, which is why I end up having to, like, kibosh the recording overnight, the lazy fuck, uh, doing a different project, which was this one. You can see we have two mob traps now. 
and it's like mirrored on the outside, but on the inside it works a little bit different. So maybe when he's available for comments, because he's not in uh, into the chat channel with me right now, so I can't actually talk to him. He's just playing around the server. I'll have him take us in there, and we'll check out the difference between this mob trap and the other mob trap, because uh, it should be a lot different. But as you can see, we're getting good, a good bit of loot. This is I've been running all since last night for about 24 hours now. Uh, it's not chunk loaded, so it's only been running when we've been online. But you can see that we've got a good bit, like we got five of these mini hearts, we got a bunch of skulls and shit. Ten stacks of each mob drop mostly. Uh, three stacks of 16 ender pearls. We got a good bit of stuff going on back here. So that's a cool thing. And we have uh, spikes going on. So Einvar spikes, which makes the loot a little bit more droppable. And I don't mean droppable as it increases the rate, but I mean like they drop better stuff. So shit has a better chance of dropping like brains and shit like that, like the rarer drops. And the same thing's going on back here, basically, but as you can see, we've got um, a ton of coal, and we've even got some uh, struck some uh, wither skeleton skulls and wither, like, uh, necrotic bones and shit back here going on. So it's a really nice, really nice setup going on. So I'll show you guys that as soon as he feels like getting us in there. But yeah, for now, uh, I'm gonna go figure out what to do with myself, because since it's been a whole fucking day, I'm now fucking lost. I don't remember what I was gonna do after the loot wall. So I gotta go figure out a new project until he's available for checking stuff out. What has he got going over here? What is this? Oh, this is automatic clay. That's what this is. So we got an aqueous accumulator right here, feeding water to the barrel. And we got we got a barrel right here that's locked with sand in it. So it, the hopper pulls the sand out, puts it in the barrel, which then gets pulled out from the, uh, the item duct down there and put in this barrel so we get clay. Eventually we'll have this automated so it'll just automatically drop down and make clay for us, but hey, whatever's good. And what's down here? Xavier likes to make all these underground like passageways and shit. Uh, he's so much better at building than me, and by better I mean confusing. Why do you surround this with witch water? Why do you surround this witch water barrel with uh, mycelium? You only need one mycelium. That's confusing. He likes to build shit so much. Like, I build really boring, flat, gray fucking buildings. As anybody who's watched me for any length of time knows, so who fucking knows what he's doing? One of these days I'm going to build a really awesome thing. I just don't know what or when. Anyway, I'll be back, guys. There, you're live now. Fucking Jesus. Oh, God. You're so fucking needy. God! Head hung in shame. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway, what's this? I'm sure you noticed there's two of these. I made the second one after I had discovered that uh, witch water has some interesting properties. Do tell. I'm waiting for this to produce something that's interesting. Come on. Oh, here we go. Charged Creeper. That's one of the things. Witch water, when it comes in contact with mobs, it changes them into other things. Like Wither Skeletons. So, using Witch water in my mob trap in place of the conveyor belts lets me get Wither Skeletons when the skeletons spawn and fall into the water. And here's all the fruits of that labor. I did notice that shit was going on back here. Now, how long has this been running? Because we have five stacks of coal back here. That almost says to me, source of power. Yeah, and this is really slow even. We could further upgrade this with Cursed Earth. Or just use a auto spawner with a skeleton in it. How long did, how long did you say this has been running? About a day. Ah, so you switched on last night after I left? Yep. Now I saw your your barrel back there, your witch water barrel, was surrounded by, my, by mycelium. Why surround it? Don't you only need one mycelium? You only need one, but I surrounded it so I could get some extra mushrooms to grow when the witch water is doing its turning into witch water thing. So there's a couple stacks of mushrooms in a chest somewhere. Fantastic. Are we going to go inside and take a look? Yeah. All the mobs should have died by now. I was at first. I was going to ask a stupid question of how did you make them stop spawning? Like, oh, but our presence here does that, right? Yep. Now I used my special mind powers to tell them all to behave. Right, right. Special Xavier powers. So here we are, guys. I'm holding shift so I don't fall into this shit, because. uh... Apparently this hurts to fall into, what you were telling me at one point. And that's what I gathered. 
I haven't decided to test it with my face yet. Well, maybe we should test it with our face. So natural water flow. There's a way so you can get back up. I'm not going down there. Now you've gouged a hole in the stone. Oh god. Oh god. Now look what you did. Slowness, weakness three, wither, and blindness. Good god. <laughs> you know, I bet we had this, whoever, however many people watch this, every single one of them was probably like, yeah, yeah, test it with your face, test it with your face. Oh, don't do that. That's gonna drive me insane. What are you doing? I don't have any smooth stone on me. Oh, god. No, I can't have that. What? I'll come back. It's driving me not <laughs> driving me bonkers too. Well, I'm gonna fix it right now, cause I don't want to forget and then see it later, cause that'll make it worse. <laughs> All right. It's not like we don't have free infinite production of smooth stone anyway. Exactly. Good God. That's probably the worst thing about making something that actually looks nice is when you do something like that, and then you just put this one piece that's not right, it just makes everyone with any kind of neurosis go crazy. That's one of the biggest reasons I don't build out of smooth stone. I never have. I could remedy that by having an auto-smelt thing on my pickaxe. Eh. There. We fixed it. Now what are we going to do? Yep. Now um, more ores? Because uh, showing this off and showing off the loot room was basically the plan for my second half of the episode, and we're at 20 minutes now. We've still got 10 minutes to fill. Huh. Huh. I have a little auto clay production thing that I didn't really make use of yet. I already covered that, actually. My last clip. <laughs> ah. I'm assuming eventually this will have the automatically fed dust. Oh yes. Barrel gets dust. Once we get to that point, we're gonna have all kinds of clay. Aqueous making water in the barrel. Hopper dragging it out, putting it in the barrel. I do that. Maybe be rolling in moss stone as well. I don't know why we would need mass clay production, but hey, whatever. For building nice things. Obviously. This is why we can't have nice things. Because Rob doesn't ever leave exactly. shit alone, questions everything, ruins it. What a dick. Jeez, that guy. Alright guys, we're gonna go figure out something to do with ourselves for the last few minutes of this episode. We'll be, we'll be back. Alright people, we're back and I have a guest that has joined us. We've got uh, our friend Vintercon, who decided he wanted to jump on and check a look. Check out, check, check a look. Check things out and take a look was what that sentence was supposed to say. We have a Nazi Creeper in our midst. Hello. And check a look, really. Did you forget how unto English? I, I forgot how to words. Words, words. How's it going, man? Not too bad. What can I click to break things? Anything you wish. Although I imbue Xavier with the power to bitch slap at any appropriate opportunities. I have the appropriate tool for that too. You have a bitch slapper? The pan of destiny. <laughs> nice! I was gonna say, please tell me it's it's called the bitch slapper, but that, that's even better. And uh, you're going to have to check out this clip, too, once I actually post this video, because the way you walk out the door while I was watching was just fucking hilarious. You should walk out holding it. It was awesome. I particularly want to get frying pan. <laughs> bah -ha -ha -ha. So, Vint jumped on because... It looks like your old storage system sort of, um... compacted. Zayer. Yep, this is a... Somewhat compact way of shoving all these ores from all these crazy machines here. We were trying to figure out what to do for the last ten minutes of the episode, guys. If I broke the stone before it broke, uh, maybe we'll just place another one. It would stall the system. Did 
Did I stall it? You can slow loots from coming in. Not much though. That's pretty much it. Loot trolling. So I was trying to figure out what to do for the last couple minutes. So what is this? And this uh... Makes block, stone blocks or... He jumped on because we were... The bottom block here, the Ignis Extruder. <laughs> it makes cobblestone, which... These two machines here, one of them places the cobblestone, the other one smashes it with these hammers. And then the black box above it sucks in the resultant gravel, which then feeds it over to these other machines, which shoves it into the sieve here. And then this autonomous activator in this corner here clicks on it, and uh, when it's done clicking, it shoves ores and such into this box, which then gets shoved into the barrels. What in the world is this? Can I jump in it? <laughs> yes, you can. A oh, nice fox. Ah, oh, you should have let him die. <laughs> he got his own way out. Ah, oh, you got blood in our smeltery. I get blood and other things too. That's actually how I ended up getting our rubber trees. So I could actually make the conveyor belts is I stood in this thing for a while until I got enough blood in there to slap it onto a random sapling, which somehow makes a rubber tree. Hilarious. Did you get that other piece of glass right here, BT dubs? I didn't. Ah, oh, yeah. Alright, so we're looking at the quest log here. We completed a few quests without even just thinking about it, just going through naturally. So, uh, let's click a few quests in here. I guess it doesn't really matter what we claim where. They're gonna basically do the same things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, claim reward. Do we want a rough, do we want a, an enchanted fish or an enchanted wooden sword? Uh... Enchanted? They're probably equally as useful. Bag. wouldn't want an enchanted fish. That one was for making uh, fluid ducts and pneumatic servos, which you guys have seen us been making. Uh, this was the fire aspect five mycelium with the ancient spores. That is it a halibut? Uh, we did this. We fired buckets. This one and isn't, crucibles. but there's a, another fish that I got as a reward and a while ago. We got the autonomous activator. I just head in the house here and I can show it to you. And the vacuum hoppers with the auto yeah. system. Top row in the double chest. So let's see what bags we get here. Oh, another wooden sword. Fertility extremely low. Fantastic. It's a sad. Totally fucking game. <laughs> uh, golden, golden Nixon. Specifically, it's the red herring. Got that as a quest reward. I must have done both those bags at once. Felt sufficiently yeah. trolled after that. Whatever. Nothing. I didn't get shit in any of these much. Any of those bags I just got. I like this sort of tooltip info on these items. Uh, which ones? Some oh, just the in? shift and control modifier. Uh, yeah. A lot of the newer mods have been doing that, so you can get a better explanation of what the item actually is, just right there at the item. I got Silk Touch 10 on a wooden sword. That's ridiculously useless Observe. if Silk Touch still does what it used to. So very silky. <laughs> so we're gonna kill Maybe zombies. She's born with it. Uh, kill. Maybe. Kill a total of three zombies? Sure. We can kill a total of three zombies. We'll just go back here. And uh, we'll just chop the feet of a few zombies really quick. Apparently, one's already been killed by somebody at some point, so this will be pretty easy. We'll just one chop these and just sort fall of on these spikes here. This will make it easy. Just about as useful. Kill these fucks as they fall down. There's a creeper. Where's the zombies? Are those spikes that they fall on? Yeah. Oh, yes. My proof. <laughs> Wow. 
I have hit points oh, over these on the mobs. There we go. How cute. When the angry zombie counted, it did. Nice. Two, 66%. Killed an angry zombie and it counted. Nice. And there's a reward for that. I never even had to remove the spike that you, like you suggested. Even better. Fuck this sword. Silky fucking sword. Fuck this butterfly. There's a creeper that fucking was butterfly. wrapped in blue. You've never seen a charge Those creeper are supercharged creepers. No. I haven't played in a long time. Well, you remember what creepers do at least, right? Run. You've never been with a yeah. woman with a beard before? I can say I have <laughs> not. Alright, how are we doing for time? Alright guys, we have two minutes left of this clip before I can wrap up this fucking episode that's been dragging on for two days. Next episode, I'm going to get into doing power. We're going to go generators. I think we're going to go lava generators at first. I think that's how we decide, Xavier. Yeah, I did see a generator that seemed kind of interesting. Because another thing our mob traps are producing is a whole lot of gunpowder. And I think there's like a TNT generator or something. Really? So I want to see how that works. Yeah. Holy dick. Which one is that? Extra utilities as generators, guys. We're going to be using for power. I can make it real quick. Oh, there it is. TNT generator. Oh, I can see it. An iron block, a furnace, two redstone, and five TNT, which we got plenty of shit for. I want to see how fast it works. I may or may not have had this waiting in the wings. Check out the crafting table. <laughs> I see how you are. Anxious to try. Very much so. Do we have an energy cell? Maybe? Maybe? It holds energy, but we haven't made an energy cell yet. Well, let's take... Do, where's one gunpowder? Do we have one gunpowder somewhere? I just want to burn one gunpowder to see how much yeah. power it makes us. It's in one of these. Unless I'm suspecting that uh, there's a certain creeper cop here who's not helping. What? Fucking Nazi no, creepers. there's no gunpowder in here. Oh, you did. Yeah, there was no gunpowder in there. Where the fuck right. did the gunpowder go? I was considering well, I'm going over to the moss trap. Invar spike is in placing it somewhere for one of you to fall on. I'm assuming that's the spike from the trap. Yeah, that's a leftover. You trolly fuck. And I was considering giving you a pickaxe, too. Sheesh. That's what I get for being me. Actually, that honestly, made more I'd sense give in you, my head. I would give you the pickaxe anyway as a reward, more than not giving you as punishment. But hey. I've only ever had one friend that uh, didn't like my shenanigans, and he doesn't speak to me anymore anyway, so whatever, who gives a fuck? What happened to your head? I'm Batman. <laughs> Alright, I'll see what this gunpowder does. Your head did recall Fixed. hearing. Uh, it blows up. That's kind of awesome. And I was just about to mention screaming. that the description says the con explosions aren't entirely contained. They do do it damage, too. Damage to it hurts so yeah. good! Do me more! Uh, the bitch Let's try with full TNT. Somebody. Still has a couple seconds. Alright, so that thing blowing up on me and then you hitting me, it was almost like being in a threesome. <laughs> Feel dirty. Yeah, you do. So that gave oh, us 64,000 RF, BT dubs. 
one gunpowder. How much uh, gunpowder did you use? Oh, just one? Yep. Not bad. Holy God. That was a big explosion. So, the one gunpowder lasted for 60 seconds. That TNT lasted for four, is lasting for four minutes. So, uh, that's a thing. How much is it producing? Well, it's already up to 100,000 from that 64. No, I mean RF per tick. Oh, uh, 80. Okay. And gunpowder is 80 as well. Yeah, they were both the same power source. So actually, this isn't actually any better, really. I mean, it just lasts longer. It's, it's four gunpowder to one TNT, right? And if one gunpowder lasts five. 60 seconds, is it five? Yeah. Oh, that's even worse. If one gunpowder lasts 60 seconds, and one TNT, which is five gunpowder, lasts four minutes, that's less than a minute per gunpowder with the TNT. The only drop, the only positive is it lasts four minutes. If you put a stack of TNT in there, it will last longer than a stack of gunpowder. That's the only, that's the only plus side I can see to that. Could you put a Yeah, it'd be firing for good. That's nice true, too. We're almost done with this, right? Yep. We're ending this explo ending this episode in explosions. I think we should all stand in the generator and blow up for the last closing thing. What do you think? I need to be clean. I feel dirty. <laughs> <good. laughs> Death .attack smeltery. Nice. Well, it was fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for guesting. I think I'm gonna close and blow up on the machine for the last the last few minutes here. Sounds good. You gonna join me in blowing up at the end of the episode, Rich? Uh, there's Xavier. I'm gonna fish out Vintercon's uh, loot out of the smeltery. Okay. Well, here's my uh, here's my ending pose for all the all you collect desktops. I'm gonna sign off before I actually die. Hope everyone had an OP time. Like, favorite, follow, subscribe, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter slash Rob the OP Gamer. Peace.